Hi, this is Pastor Kevin with Journey of Faith Foursquare Christian Church. I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for logging on today to watch our video podcast as we explore God's Word and apply it to our lives. You know, it's so important for our walks that we spend time each day in God's Word to get to know Him and get to grow in Him. With all of my teachings, I have a sermon handout that is used during the message. It contains scriptures and fill-in-the-blank sections for you to follow along with. You may obtain this handout by logging onto our website that is listed on the screen. Go to our resources section and choose study materials. I hope and pray that God's word will speak to you today and thank you for joining the journey. Sometimes we forget as we just saying what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And sometimes I think we forget to cry out to Him and have faith and trust in Him. I put a, a, a thought of the day out, I think it went out or it's going to go out that says, when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, He will never let us down. Amen? When we cry out to God, when we pray to God, He will never let us down. So right now, as, as you think about it, just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. And I want you 
to think about that thing or things that you are going through right now in your life. And I want us to sing. I want us to cry out that chorus now. I want us to cry out that chorus. I want everybody in this neighborhood to hear what a powerful name, the name of Jesus Christ is. So Scott, if you can lead us to that chorus again. Guys, it doesn't matter if we sing good or not. I, I'm the worst singer in here, I promise you. But to God's ears, it's beautiful. So let's cry out to Jesus Christ right now. And as you cry out, I want you to lift up that thing or things that you're dealing with and give it to God because I promise you this, He will never, ever, ever disappoint you. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. struggles, Lord. Lord, may we sense you and feel you today in a mighty and powerful way. In Jesus' awesome and mighty and powerful name and prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. If you want to have a seat, we're going to invite the kids to come on up. something right. 
Okay, like say you're taking a test and your friend asks you for an answer and you say no because you don't want to cheat and they get mad at you. That's an example of persecution. And here in the U.S. we are fortunate enough to be able to worship Jesus Christ without being persecuted. But in other parts of the world this isn't possible and you will either get punished or killed for believing in God. This is why less and less people are believing in Him so that they will be able to live. But in Matthew 10.33 it says, But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. So this is why we have to stay faithful to God, no matter what position or circumstance we're put in. Amen. Amen. Church, can we please pray for the children? Please. Dear God, please show the kids in the light, and that no matter what circumstance or position they are put in, they will always serve you and be by you, and know that you will always be by their side and you'll always take care of them, and that when they grow up and they have children of their own, that they'll teach them that to always believe in you and always have you in their life, and mm. that they will always serve you, and that from generation to generation, their kids will teach the same to theirs. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Children, you can now go. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna take a 10 minute break so you guys um, can go back and have some donuts and coffee. And if you see somebody new, please shake a hand, give them a welcome. The uh, Illuminate Youth Group are actually leading the service for us. And that's right, that's right. Absolutely. And, you know, we think it's very, very important that not only the youth be a part of our church, but they be a part of our services. And you might not know it, but on any given Sunday, they're involved in worship, they're involved in the back with the computers. And I sometimes forget just how much involved they are, uh, except on those Sundays when they're away at youth camp. And then I realized, like, oh my gosh, there's nobody to do all this stuff. So for us, it's very important that they be involved and feel that they're a part of an integral part of this church. And so twice a year, we do a service where we allow the youth to, to take over. You know, there are so many examples in the Bible of how Jesus used youth and teenagers to spread the gospel. And I think that's a great model. And it's a model that we should follow as well. And so... I think you're in for a special treat today, a powerful treat. And, and I know, I'm going to invite up a special friend of mine, Miss Brianna, who's going to go ahead and do the announcements for us. Good morning, church. <laughs> Your announcements. This Thursday at Pastor Kevin's home, we will have, we will have night of corporate prayer. It starts at 7 p.m. and ends at 8.15 p.m. We hope you can join us. Mother's Day is next Sunday. For your best Sunday, I mean, wear your Sunday best and bring your mom because we will have a beautiful photo backdrop and you can get a great photo of your family for Mother's Day. We are having a church baptism and potluck July 9th. Sign up is in the back on the info table if you would like to be baptized. Okay. Oh, yeah, you go. Oh, can I have the offering come up? Don't pray over the offering. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, we bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Let this money not just be just for our church. Let it go for you, Lord. It's all of, it's days. Every day is for you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Today we'll be teaching about the persecuted church. Persecution of Christians can be traced back to the biblical account of Jesus to the present day. Early Christians were persecuted for their faith at the hands of both Jews and Romans. Today, Christians in the United States are facing challenging times. According to Christianity Today, anti-Christian hostility is on the minds of many American Christians these days. Each new legal challenge to religious liberty at the state of federal levels raises the issue afresh. It seems that today Christians must think through their cultural positions more carefully than any other point in U.S. history. This is why, or this is what we are going here in the United States. But have you ever really thought and prayed about what the church worldwide is experiencing? The churches of other nations really show us the true definition of persecution. Across the world, each month, 322 Christians are killed for their faith in Jesus Christ. Each month, 214 Christian churches and properties are destroyed. And each month, 722 acts of violence are committed against Christians for their belief in Christ. 1 Corinthians 12.26 says that we are one body. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. If we are truly one body, we must join in prayer and fully support the persecuted church across the world. Imagine. Islamic soldiers force your 10-year-old son to gather wood for a fire. The soldiers pressure him to convert to Islam. When he refuses, he's thrown on the burning wood he collected and left to die. They told me I would be released if I became a Muslim. I told them that was not possible. I am a Christian, so they threw me on the fire. Your son escapes, but the scars remain, a reminder of his sacrifice. Imagine, your teenage daughter goes to Bible camp. On the second day, the students are attacked. One of the attackers secures her hands behind her back, while another holds a piece of broken glass to her stomach. She's told to deny Christ. I did not answer him, so he pressed the glass harder against me. Do you believe your God can help you? He asked. Gripped with fear, she cries out, Help me, Lord, I do not want to deny you. Imagine, your pastor has refused to register his church with the government. During the service, he's dragged from the church and beaten by the local police. When the officers find a Bible hidden in his shirt, he's beaten with it. After returning home, I felt pain all over my body. It was almost numb at the beginning, but later became so painful that I could not sleep. It is the fifth time he's been arrested. If he's caught again, the police say they will kill him. Every day, thousands of Christians are persecuted for their faith. Hundreds are martyred, about one every three minutes. They're not heroes or statistics, they're family. In over 40 nations around the globe, our family is assaulted for their testimony of Jesus Christ. In most instances, the persecution could have been averted if they had simply denied Christ. But they didn't, and they won't. In Sudan, an Islamic army is set on jihad, or holy war, has systematically targeted Christians. Death and suffering can be seen throughout the countryside. Countless Christians are being displaced within their own country, fleeing from persecution. They've lost everything, often arriving in refugee camps with nothing more than the clothes on their backs. In spite of heavy persecution, the church in Sudan continues growing at astonishing rates. Many of the believers bear the scars of their faith, but they also bear a testimony to God's faithfulness. Over 500 churches have been destroyed in Indonesia. On the island of Ambon, Christians have been massacred in a so-called religious cleansing by radical Muslims. Facing increased persecution, pastors in Jakarta have encouraged their congregations to stand firm, confident that their suffering is a prelude to coming revival. With the fall of communism in Eastern Europe, many have hailed its defeat. But Christians in North Korea, Vietnam, Laos, or China would disagree. Hmong villagers have been imprisoned in Vietnam and Laos after converting to Christianity. Some have had boiling water poured down their throats for simply possessing a Bible in their own language. The Hmong tribe is the largest in Southeast Asia, numbering 10 million. 
meeting secretly in homes, more than two million have recently committed their lives to Christ. The persecution facing our brothers and sisters is not a human tragedy. It's a spiritual reality facing the body of Christ. We may not be able to stop the attacks, but we can ease their pain. Through prayer, encouragement, and practical assistance, we can fellowship in their suffering. We can show them that they are not forgotten. It's hard to ignore their pain after you hear their cries. Okay. <clears throat> Please open your Bibles to Matthew 24, 3 to 14 for our scripture reading today. Please stand. Signs of the end of the age. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us. When will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains, when they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And, they, and then many will fail, fall away, and betray one another, and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and the end will come. You can go ahead and have a seat now. And uh, uh, before we start with today's scripture, I just want to go back to last week's scripture. Remember that the title of last week's sermon was Foolish Talkers. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon was talking about how uh, we can tell whether or not someone is as wisdom or is a fool by the way that they talk. And the last point that I made in last week's sermon was that what would Jesus say? And in all situation, in all circumstances, we should speak like Jesus spoke. And if you remember, there are so many examples of how Jesus in the Bible spoke with kindness and was gracious to people, regardless of how hard, how much they had done to him, regardless of how they had heard him, Jesus always spoke gracious, kind words to people. And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about last week, I could have gone down when Peter betrayed him. He was gracious to Peter. When he met Saul on the road to Damascus, Saul, who had killed Christians and persecuted Christians, he spoke kindness and grace to him. And it was that kindness and grace, it was his words that made a difference in his life. And, and I just want to encourage you guys, as, as we go through and we are going to be persecuted as a church, and we are going to be questioned and mocked and ridiculed, that we do not fight back, but we show them God's grace and kindness and love in all things and at all times and in all situations. Because that's what God would want us to do here. And, uh, I'm sorry, for can I help you guys? Anybody going to say anything? If you'd like to see, you can have a cup of coffee and sit down. Is this doing your faith? Yes, it is. And who is the leader of this assembly? I'm the pastor of this church. And this is a Christian church, correct? This is absolutely a Christian church. Caesar! What? What are you talking about? Caesar? Um, what are you guys doing here? What are you, what's with the guns? Put the guns away. You don't need guns here. What is going on? Just stop it. I am from the government. This is an official a notice. This assembly is hereby declared illegal. Your pastor is arrested for leading and encouraging all of you to engage in acts 
that the government has determined is a hate crime against society. Take them away. No, no, stop this. Stop it now, I said. Stop it. We're in the middle of a church service. You must stop it. Father, forgive them for what they do. They do not know. Lord, please, Lord. The punishment for this hate crime is death. No, stop. Now, I know all of you are not who have willingly participated in this illegal activity. Know that if any of you resist us in any way, you too will be handled the same as your leader. Troops, gather Bibles for the burning. What? Hey, shut up. I don't want to hear anything out of you. Get the Bibles for burning now. Get the Bibles. Put your Bibles in the boxes. What about their phones, Captain? That's yes, if I wanted to. Captain, Apple has shut down all access to the Bible by order of the government. The government is also tracking down any devices that bypass the block. Very well. Only confiscate the Bibles and any other propaganda they have about this Jesus. Whoever that is. Hurry up, put him in. Hurry up, hurry up. Come over here. We'll be starting the education classes by the government next Sunday, 10 a.m. Chips, shall we take all the names of the people here? Yes, I want to check all identifications. I want the names, addresses, phone numbers of each of them. If you all do not show up in our mandatory government issue class next Sunday, you will be arrested. This is wrong. Hey, shut up! This is wrong! Hey, get her! This is wrong! Arrest her! You cannot stop us from believing in Jesus! No, get her! Stop! Shut up! Shut up! Believe in Jesus! They can't stop us! Kill her! I will never deny the Lord! You guys stand strong! Every, every knee will Shut bow! Up. And every tongue will confess that you Jesus not Christ is the Lord! Do not deny Him, church! Stand strong! Stand strong! She has been disposed of, Captain. Her and sent them to her so-called Jesus, whatever that is. Anyone else want to disobey our government? Anyone? <laughs> yeah. What about you? No, no, I will serve the government. You're right, Captain. You're always right. That's right. Anyone else want to disobey our government? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck getting out of here alive. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyone else besides all of you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I will never follow this government. I will only serve Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Get off. I will only serve Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Forgive them, Lord, for they not know what they do. Never stop. Never stop. Jesus. All right. So does anyone else want to disobey our government? Anyone else want to go meet their Jesus today? Meet their God today? <laughs> no one else? That's what I thought. You all pathetic. <sighs> I will see you all next Sunday for a government issue class. Captain, what about the chip? Ah, uh, yes, the chip. Before they leave, insert a chip in each of them. If they refuse, kill them. It wasn't long ago that 
I had the privilege of spending some time with a, a remarkable lady called Haywoo. She's North Korean, 70 years old, and hands down, one of the most energetic people I've ever met. But Haywood's life has been full of trauma. In 1997, in the midst of a great famine in North Korea, Haywood's daughter, in her mid-twenties, starved to death in her own home. Hagen's husband escaped to China. He found God. But sadly, he was caught by the secret police. And six months later, he died in a North Korean prison camp. Hagen said to me, I was shocked to hear that my husband had become a Christian. But instinctively, I knew that he had found the truth. It wasn't too long after this that Hei Wu herself escaped to China and, like her husband, through a series of events, became a Christian. And as she spent time thinking back over her faith, she came to the realisation that her mother, who had died a few years ago, had been a secret believer. And she said to me that, one of the deepest regrets of my life was that I was never able to share my faith with my mum. A few years after this, Haley was called by the secret police. She was repatriated to North Korea and placed into a prison camp. As she told me this story, she said to me, I was lucky. I was only sentenced to a few years despite the fact that I was Christian. As I spent time talking with Hei Wu about life in these prisons, and she told me stories of death so rampant that bodies would lay on the ground for three or four days without being cleaned up. Stories of mental and physical abuse that would make you sick to the pit of your stomach. I couldn't help but wonder, what is it about people like Hei Wu that, that makes them risk everything for the privilege of being in a relationship with Jesus? But more than that, what would I risk for the same privilege? You see, in the middle of one of the darkest places on earth, Hei Wu chooses to do something so radical so dangerous and so Christ-like. She said to me that in the middle of this prison, God gave her a heart to evangelize, a heart to tell my fellow prisoners about Jesus. And so right here in the middle of a North Korean labor camp, a secret fellowship, a secret church, I asked Hei Wu to tell me more about this church, more about what it looked like. And she said to me, I didn't have a Bible and I knew very little, but, but I would share with them the verses that I knew. We would meet in the pit toilets, the most horrible places in the camp, a place where guards would not even go because of the smell. And she said, as we met there, we would pray we would recite Bible verses and we would sing hymns of worship and praise to God. It's absolutely incredible. You know, I was recently asked one of those questions. It stayed with me for weeks. One of those questions that kind of reverberates around your mind and captures you every thought. You see, someone asked me, if Jesus Christ walked the earth today, would you follow him? 
You see, Jesus Christ was radical. The way he spoke, the way he talked, every single thing he did was radical. But absolutely incredible. You know, this idea of this smiling, happy Jesus, the kind of, he gives you everything, but calls you to nothing. It just doesn't sit right. There's stories like Halo and, and other people who are regularly persecuted for their faith that brings a perspective unlike anything else. People who are obedient, selfless, and courageous follow Jesus. Halo had a church in a place so putrid that no one dared go near him. Inside a prison, where if caught, you will be tortured and killed without exception. What's your response to that? You see, we serve Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world, and a radical. And our response to that should be the uncompromising unashamed and passionate follow him whatever the cost are on the world today. Christians are being persecuted for their faith. In some of these nations, it is illegal to own a Bible, to share your faith in Christ, change your faith, or teach your children about Jesus. Those who boldly follow Christ, in spite of government edict or radical opposition, can face harassment, arrest, torture, and even death. Yet Christians continue to meet for worship and to witness for Christ, and the church in restricted nations is growing. Never take for granted the freedoms we have here to worship and love our Lord Jesus Christ. May, all, may we always remember to pray for the persecuted church and our religious freedom to worship Jesus Christ. story of a small village in India. And in this village, there was this family that came to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord. This agitated the village so much, and everybody became so upset that an angry mob gathered and shoved them into the public square. The village chief confronted them, and he said to the man, if you and your family will not recant your faith, you all will surely die. The man didn't know what to say or what to do. And so the only thing that came to mind for him were the words of the song that he himself had composed when he had first surrendered his life to God. And so he began to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And with that, horrific. His children were killed. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. He was 
was given another chance, this time with his wife's life on the line. And yet he continued to say, Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none After her tragic death, he was given one final opportunity, this time to save himself. And yet he continued to sing. died on that day. Something remarkable happened. A seed was planted in the heart of that village chief. A seed that began to grow over time and eventually he called the community together in that very same neighborhood, in that very same square. And he renounced his former faith and declared his allegiance to Jesus Christ. And a celebration broke out in that moment and the gospel began to flourish and to grow in that community, not just in that village, but across the whole region. Because they had seen real faith and they knew the true character of God because of a family that believed and sacrificed even under the penalty of death. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us and ensnares us, and let us run the race with endurance, the race that, that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and, our fin and finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, 
despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Church, are you guys ready to feel something? Imagine any time where this really happened to us. Would you guys be ready to stand for faith? It's crazy to think that this is actually happening in other places. And it's something that we really need to be ready for. And if you don't really have, know what it means to really be ready, um, we're going to take an altar call in a little bit. And PK is going to be up here. But to be ready means having 100% faith in God, um, putting all your trust in Him, and not looking backwards whenever you are pressured or tested. It means God being the first priority in your life. So be careful if you want to come up, and if anyone wants to receive God or wants to renew their faith, PK will be on the side. You come up and let him pray over you. so much for granted. When I was in Thailand about eight years ago or so on a missions trip, we were talking to these teenage kids that were defying their families. Because in, in Thailand, there's a growing Muslim population, but it's heavily Buddhist, and, and the Christian population is so small. And, and these kids were defying their families to, to follow Jesus. And I remember reading or talking to a young boy who would who hid a Bible inside of his, the toilet in his house. And he would go in there in the middle of the night and, and pull the Bible out of the toilet so that he could read the Word of God. And his family found the Bible once and they got mad at him and they punished him and they threw the Bible away. And they swore that if he did it again, they would kick him out of the house. Well, he went and found another Bible and he hid it somewhere else in his house. And he kept getting up in the middle of the night to read his Bible because nothing and nobody was going to stop him reading the Word of God. And then I look at houses here in America where we have three, four, five, six, ten Bibles, Bibles in our house. We have Bibles on our phone and Bibles everywhere. But how often do we stop to read the Word of God? This young man was willing to risk his life and everything because he had decided to follow Jesus. 
And yet so often in our own lives, we come up with so many reasons, reasons, why we don't have time to read the Word of God, why we don't have time to come to church, and why we don't have time to fellowship with other Christians. And, and I remember recently I was talking to someone about this, and I said, you have not given me any reasons, but you've given me a lot of excuses. And I'm sorry, excuses just don't cut it. I think this is a really powerful service that the youth did, and, and, and Janine and Pastor Ruben and all you, you guys did an amazing job. And, and you know, I think it's really easy, but this was the best one ever. I, I can honestly say this was the best youth service we've ever seen. And my hope and prayer is that we won't walk out of here and forget the powerful message that they gave us today. I think in that one video, they asked a pretty significant question. If Jesus walked the earth today, would you follow him? Well, I want to ask you the same question. Will you follow Jesus Christ today? Will you take a stand for what you believe in? Will you take a stand for what Jesus came and preached and sacrificed for? Will you take a stand in your belief that one day He will return as King of King, Lord of Lord? Now, maybe we don't get thrown on fires yet because of what we believe, but we are, church, we are becoming more and more persecuted for what we believe. Many people, many different areas for many different reasons are trying to silence the church. And I don't get it. With so many people, the, the, the majority of Americans say that they are born again Christians. Church, if there are so many Christians around here, why is the minority silencing us? Yes. It doesn't make sense to me. I hope that you don't see today's message as a downer or a discouragement, but I hope that you take today's message as an encouragement to stand bold for Jesus Christ. To know that whatever trial, tribulation, suffering you go through here, here on earth, that God will use for good. I'm sure that that man didn't know that by sacrificing his daughter, his wife, and himself, that a whole region would come to know Jesus Christ. What he was focused on was knowing that he could not deny Jesus Christ to anybody. I hope we all take that away, that regardless of the situation and circumstances, we will never deny Jesus Christ to anybody at any time. No, it won't always be popular. No, quite honestly, we may suffer in some, some degree. We must never deny the name of Jesus Christ to anybody. As I said before, if we put our faith and trust in God, He will never disappoint us. And as Matt said, maybe right now there are some of you here that, that as we've read, we've sung the songs and we've watched the videos, maybe, maybe you don't know Jesus Christ. Maybe you, you've heard about this man. Maybe you've read some of the, the, the amazing stories in the Bible about him. And maybe you, you've thought, maybe I should get to know him. Well, we want to give you an opportunity today to commit your life to know Jesus Christ, to serve and follow Jesus Christ. make that declaration that we just sang that I've decided to follow Jesus Christ and there is no turning back. You know, look at that video of that pastor who's been arrested five times and, and they threatened him now if they did arrest him again he's going to kill him. I'm like, wow, praise God. Look at those people that died and were burned and they carried... I, I, to me, they don't carry scars. They carry medals of honor. As the band plays, if any of you want to receive Jesus Christ, maybe maybe you, you did know Jesus and for whatever reason you've kind of fallen away that life has taken over. Life and, and has gotten crazy and you know you decided to follow Jesus for a while but, but you did turn back. We want to give you an opportunity today to get to know Jesus again and recommit your life to Him. 
Maybe you just need a little bit of encouragement. Maybe, maybe you, you, you're dealing with so much stuff right now. Your, your issues have issues. And there's some days you wake up and you just, you just don't want to deal with it anymore. I remember when I worked for a company, things were so bad that, that when I would drive from the airport to the, the office, I used to pray that something would happen to the car or something so I didn't have to go. Maybe that's the way you feel. Maybe you, you, you kind of pray that you don't have to go somewhere. You don't have to deal with something because you just don't want to deal with it anymore. Well, we, want to, we want to pray for you. We want to give you encouragement. No life isn't going to be easy. No life isn't always going to be fun. But so often we forget that we don't live for this temporary life here. We live for eternity. One day, one day, you will be in heaven and there will no more be no more worries about the issues you faced here on life. One day you will be in heaven and there will be no more concerns about your injuries or illnesses. One day you will be in heaven and you won't have to worry about relationships because you're going to be there with Jesus Christ. So maybe right now you're just beaten down and worn and tattered and you just don't want to go on with it. Well, we want to pray for you as well. We want to encourage you. Because following Jesus Christ is not a mistake. Following Jesus Christ is not a temporary answer to our solutions or problems. He is our eternal answer. Our eternal solution. He is our eternal peace, our comfort, and our joy. He is our eternal strength. When we set our eyes on Him, church, there is no turning back. So as the worship band continues to play, if you want prayer, I want to encourage you to come over to the side here so we can pray for you. And, and, and before we do that, I just want to, I want to pray for our church. Not just the church here in the building, but I want to pray for the church Worldwide, and, and if I can encourage you guys, and I, I thank you all that, that pray for Janine and I every day, and I want to encourage you to, to pray for all pastors, even pastors you don't know, pray for all pastors. I can't tell you the number of pastors that I meet with on a regular basis that are just tired and they're beaten and they're worn out. Pray for all pastors. Pray for pastors to, to preach the Word of God. Man, it's become unpopular now to preach the Word of God. Pray for pastors to stand firm in their faith and what they believe. It just breaks my heart when I see some more and more that are just kind of falling away from the Word because it's just honestly easier by just kind of go along with society. I don't really have to preach the Word of God anymore. We can just talk about nice things in life. It's easier for me. It's easier for you. And you know when I do that, more people show up so that makes everything better, right? No. Pray for pastors to have the strength and the courage, like we saw in that video, to preach the Word of God. No matter what. No matter if their church goes from being 500 to 50, if they're preaching the Word of God, encourage them. Give them the strength to stand firm in the Word of God. Pray for all church members. You know, I, I pray for revival in America, but I don't pray for revival in the world. I pray for revival in the church and in Christians because it doesn't, as I said before, it doesn't add up to me. It doesn't make sense that so many people go to church, but yet we as a society are falling farther and farther away from God. It doesn't make sense to me. So I pray and I hope you will join me. Pray for revival in churches and in Christians. Pray for us to stand firm in the Word of God. Pray for us to, to speak the truth to all people. Because church, if we don't have revival here, then we are never going to have it outside of these buildings. So pray that revival happens in America, in churches, and in Christians. Before we worry about going to the streets and preaching, we need to have it happen right here. And pray through that, we will see revival happen in this country like we never have. Yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff going on all around us. There's threats of wars, there's threats of this, there's threats of that. But there's one thing that never changes, that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is saying today, yesterday, and forever. 
The same Jesus that has brought people in the Bible and throughout history through all their trials and tribulations is the same Jesus that will bring you through your trials and tribulations as well. But you must decide to follow Jesus. So if you wouldn't mind, let's bow our heads. And, and after I'm done, as the band is playing, if you want to receive prayer, come on over here. We're going to have a prayer team over there and we're going to pray for you, Lord, you guys. So Lord, we, we thank you, Heavenly Father. But we thank you that regardless of our situation or circumstance, you are there with us. Lord, we thank you that no matter how big our problems are, you are always bigger. Lord, we thank you that no matter how tired we get, you never tire. Lord, I thank you for the powerful message that was delivered by our youth today. And I thank you for the way that you are moving and growing in that youth. I thank you for their heart and their desire to follow you, to love you, to honor you, to serve you, to preach you, Lord. Lord, may they be an example for all of us today that as we go out, that we will decide to follow you. Lord, I ask and I pray in the name of Jesus that, that we would see you move in a mighty and powerful way this week. Lord, Lord you know all of the the worries and the fears, the issues, the problems, the trials, the struggles that, that all of us are going through. Lord, give us the strength. Give us the encouragement. Give, it the, give us the faith and trust to follow. Lord, I know that, that your word never comes back void, never comes back empty, Lord. So, so I pray that we would all take that step to spend time in your word. Lord, we don't have to meet in an outhouse. We don't have to hide a Bible in a toilet, Lord. Lord, may we make a recommitment to you and your word this week. Lord, I pray for all those people that are hurting right now. May you comfort them. I pray for all those people that are weak. May you strengthen them. I pray for all those people that are lost. May you guide them. And Lord, may you rise up and stir up in, in this church and in all churches, Lord. A revival, Lord. May we see revival in our churches and Christians, Heavenly Father. May we stand up with one voice, the voice of Jesus Christ. May we use one weapon, the Word of God. May we bring healing back to this country, Heavenly Father. You are a good God. You are an awesome and almighty God. You are the King of kings, the Lord of Lords. You are the one true God. Lord, we, we make so many gods in this world now in society, but you are the one true God. Lord, we thank you for your power and your might. We thank you for your love and your forgiveness, Lord. We, your, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Heavenly Father. Stir up in us your spirit. Stir up in us your spirit this week. Lord, may we always be a spirit and a love filled church. In Jesus' glorious and awesome and mighty name we pray. Amen.
Sunday night during the youth group, they uh, they get together in our house and they're here. Let me get out of the way because I really wasn't involved in this. Um, uh, you know, they've been practicing, they've been studying, they've been doing just an awesome job. And, and Richie, thank you so much for letting us use all your guns. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, it, uh, there's more at home apparently. So, um, but but thank you guys. If you can just give them a, a round of applause. So parents, you never have to worry about whether or not they're learning the Word of God because they're doing something. Oh, they're, they're rearranging. So while they're doing that, I'll just keep talking. Don't forget, as, uh, as Brianna said, my, my best friend Bree said, uh, next week is Mother's Day, hint, hint. And we're going to have a Mother's Day backdrop. So families, if you want to come take a family picture, we're going to have Ray doing professional uh, photos for us. So it's a great gift. And guys and kids, I'm not giving you any hints, but... Um, most photos need a photo frame, which is uh, not a bad Mother's Day gift if you want. Uh, but uh, but so please join us for that Thursday night. We have our prayer group. Oh, and you're bringing your iPhones to take the pictures. But frames are still not a bad way to go with that. Um, but uh, Thursday night, I'm still just talking while you guys take pictures. Um, Thursday night, uh, Thursday night at our house, we're having prayer night. Please join us for that. It'll be an amazing time. And ladies, get together Saturday at our house for some prayer. May God bless you. May He keep you. May His countenance shine upon you. In God's gracious and holy name we go. Amen. 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 We hope that you've enjoyed today's podcast. Journey of Faith is a four-square Christian church located in Glendora, California. For more information on Journey of Faith, visit us on the internet at www.thejourneyoffaith.net. That's www.thejourneyoffaith.net. You may also call us at 626 Nine one four three four zero zero. 
And finally, we hope you will come visit us. Our Sunday morning service is at 10 a.m. We offer ministries for all ages, from newborns through high school during our service. May God bless you. Thank you for joining the journey. Thank you.